Hey, it's Max Chroma with another video. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you guys to the Max Chroma Photo Tessellator. And what I've decided to do is sort of reconfigure the products on my payhip.com slash Max Chroma web store and start off with just the free version of the Photo Tessellator Pattern Pack 1. And then as I release the videos for the products, I'll put out the paid version of the additional patterns and the $50 version of the Photo Tessellator 2022, which includes all sorts of other files. But let's start off really simple with the free Max Chroma Photo Tessellator Pattern Pack 1. You can click on that link and then you can just click download now and you could type in whatever you want for the email. Doesn't matter, you could put in your email address and then I'll send you updates. You can get free update links when you go to download it. Um, I'll, you know, reset your downloads credentials and stuff like that. But otherwise you could just put anything in as long as it kind of looks correct, I guess. So you could put that in, download it, you'll get a zip file. And in this video, I'm just gonna show you what you get in the zip file and how these things sort of work. And I'm gonna be using an older version of Photoshop. For me, this is version 14.2.1. Um, and that's because I use this version with my old um, Max Chroma Color Blender and Halftone Tessellator. This is a plugin I made with uh, Flash. So it uses, it works in that older version. And I'll just show you guys a little bit and compare it to why I have this whole new photo tessellator thing. And so this is the stuff that you get in the zip file <clears throat> for the photo tessellator free pattern pack one. There's this file that is just the Max Chroma Grayscale Gradient Mapper. And this is just a couple of grayscale test images. There's this one with the 256 levels of gray. And this is in RGB mode. It's just desaturated, has no um, color values. These are all like the same value of RGB. <clears throat> there's this photo of volcano, car, etc. Then there's another layer of these um, city imagery. That's just another test pattern. And then I have this curves adjustment layer. And if I have my properties panel opened right here, then I can see this with just like making curves adjustments. Okay. And then I've got a gradient remapper and this is set to be uh, no smoothness, so it just keeps the same gray points. And you can use this to like change the gray levels, use it like levels. And then there's also a recolorizer. And this one you could use maybe to recolor the gray levels. But this is just a grayscale gradient remapper image and test pattern. And these are free because this is just stuff you build in Photoshop normally, right? Then I've got this photo tessellator free pattern layers, free halftone pattern layers. And then these are the things that become part of the foundation to all of this photo tessellator stuff that I've got. And this is a round halftone dot pattern layer. And these are pattern fill layers. All right. And then we've got the elliptical halftone pattern dot. And then we've got the line halftone pattern dot layer. And I'm actually going to go and um, remove all of the, I'm going to just basically, I don't know, reset patterns. And I'll do OK. And then I'll do um, replace patterns. And I'll load them from this free tessellator pattern pack right here. And these would be the patterns you get with this pattern file, this Max Chroma Photo Tessellator Free Halftone Patterns.pat file. And so there's six patterns, actually. It's really just four. There's these three main ones, the round halftone dot pattern, the elliptical halftone dot pattern, and the line. And then there's this um, sort of like sphere one or, or halftone, or it's like a crescent moon type one. I got to show you how it works. It's really fun. But in this video, I'm just going to show you the main stuff you get with the free halftone patterns. So it's like these patterns files. And then you can do all sorts of stuff with them in the different versions of Photoshop. So I'm in this older version. I just want to show you the basic way you can use it. So this file doesn't have it in there. It's just a basic grayscale gradient file. But I wanted to show you that so that when I open this grayscale photo tessellator colorizer, it's in 300 DPI. And now we're looking at the same file, but it's in like halftone patterns. 
okay? And we've got this, this other layer in here. There's two different layers in here. So we've got a, the grayscale recolorizer. I can just turn that off. It's not really doing anything. The custom gradient remapper isn't either, and neither is the levels. So let's just look at this halftone pattern layer and this posterizer. I'm going to start off more simple. We'll turn, turn off the posterizer, and then we'll just look at the halftone pattern layer. You can see it's kind of like creating a, a pattern over it. And I'm going to turn this into normal mode and then set the fill to 100%. And then let's look at this. So we have this pattern round dot layer, and I can set the scale maybe to 100%. Let's make it larger. And you can see how this pattern then repeats all the way across the image. And if I set this whole layer to, um, let's say, hard mix, it's going to actually do like a thresholding. And what these are are real extractions of the bitmap patterns like I sort of went through manually and extracted the exact pixel values that you need for the patterns to create a halftone threshold array sort of um, bit mapping. And so you can now do this in real time. And let me make the scale a little bit smaller, like maybe 50%. And then I'm just going to duplicate this layer. Alt, drag it, make a new layer above it, and then merge these together. And maybe even lasso this out a little bit. I got to do something to show you guys. Layer via cut, <clears throat> delete that. So you see what really is happening. So this is just a layer, right? This is just a layer that I have over the background. and It's just a pattern repeated. If I set this blending mode to hard mix, okay, it is now like a threshold of the layer below, but what the threshold follows is the pattern underneath. And that's what's specially built into this pattern is 256 levels of gray that turn into different size dots of halftone based on the level of gray underneath it. Okay, so if this is a very light level of gray, it's going to be a smaller dot. And if it's a darker level of gray, okay, it's going to be darker dots until it sort of inverts like a checkered pattern and then becomes like uh, little holes inside the black background. Okay, and so that's, you can see it over here in this gradient, just turns into half tones. I mean, it seems like magic, but it's like really cool how it works. And it's just sort of mathematics. And this is how the half toning algorithms already work by nature. I'm just turning it into a pattern that you can have in Photoshop and use however you want. So there's all sorts of ways. This is just going to be tons of videos I got on this stuff, but I want to release it a little bit at a time. And I want there to be something free that's sort of built into Photoshop anyway that you should have access to, but now we can do it in like a real time way. And so with this pattern layer set to hard mix, and then I can change, um, actually, let me undo, let me go back and get that layer. Okay, so you see this one. And imagine I control it with the transform and I rotate it. So now you can see how the angle of the halftone pattern is just a rotation of that, of that whole pattern. That's the angle of the dots, right? And so I could just do that in real time. And then if I have the curves adjustment underneath that and change the curves of the file. Okay, so see how the dots get lighter and then the dots get darker. This is all in real time, and because it's an adjustment layer, I can control that and, and change it, and the dots are there, especially if I have it as a pattern fill um, set to this hard mix. Then it's like I've got real-time control. This is not processing everything through a bitmap mode. This is now in RGB mode, and you know I could even go to that colorizer, let's say, and turn this into a two-color pattern of, um, you know, halftone dots just by recolorizing that black and white pattern. And so the, the possibilities are really crazy with all of this stuff. And I just wanted to get you guys started. This is the free Max Chroma halftone photo tessellator colorizer, 300 DPI. Um, and that determines kind of like the resolution of the dots. Even if I make, especially if I make this like smaller scale, the dots might get to a point where 
um, they they don't have enough resolution in the image to be like circles they're just little pixel chunks so you got to be careful especially if you're going to get into using this for any other purposes besides like having fun um, if you're going to use this professionally that's a whole other series of videos you should follow rather than thinking that this is going to do it automatically you want to be in high resolution super powerful computer etc but I can look at this image, I can go to this halftone pattern, I can start making curves adjustments. A lot of this stuff is just, I've never been able to do it any other way. And um, it's very powerful and very it's like invaluable for how I work now. Um, and just a lot of fun stuff you could do with it. The next level that you can get to is some of these ways I discovered you can take the halftone pattern, set it to a different mode, like hard light, and then I was I was basically looking at it, looking at like this grayscale level here. And I'm like, you know, what if I have it on a different blending mode? And then I'd start changing it. And I was looking at when I had this down like around 33%, okay, or just lower, I saw that there was like a black and like gray kind of colors. And I saw that some sort of interesting patterns overlaying the original, when I started taking this um, layer and setting a certain blending mode over it, and then I thought, well, what if I use the posterizer on top of that? So I set a posterizer down to about three levels, because if you understand how a posterizer works on grayscale, if you set it to, um, so turning off that pattern layer, this is just the original grayscale values, and then um, a posterizer. So when it's in set to like two levels, it's going to be black and white. And when it's set to three levels, it's just going to give me a middle gray. Okay, see that? Set to four levels, it'll be a dark gray, a middle gray, a white and black. Five levels, there'll be now a middle gray, dark and light, etc. Let's look at it with just uh, three levels. So if you know that that does it to a sort of underlying gradient, then what happens when you have this pattern on, set to this 33%, and you turn on this posterizer, and this is where it gets really interesting. So, and if you look at this, the, the whole reason I found that percentage was actually, it was more like I had it up here, and I was looking at it, and I turned the posterizer on, and I saw all these black and gray and white dots. And for me, when they're interlocking like this, this is like really, really like the goal of a lot of the stuff I have and some of these other things like that um, that uh, plug-in, okay, that does all these color separation things and different interlocking halftone patterns. And so the powerful thing for me was that I'm looking at this saying, wait a minute, can I get a real-time halftone pattern to create interlocking dots over the background, okay, and then change the angles and scale it around, do whatever. But also, is it the right percentages? And I found if I change the percentage of the, um, the hard light blending mode, and then I had like this underlying pattern set to a posterizer. So if I set it the right way, the posterizer is at three levels. And then the halftone pattern just has to be a certain percentage. I saw the dots right here, the black dots and the white dots. You know, when it was higher percentage, they were both interlocking together. And I, like, moved it down. And when I saw it got to about 33%, okay, there's 34. You see they're, like, crossing each other a bit still. And the 128 is still got some dots in it, 33%. I suddenly saw the 128 level was gray. And then everything above that had some white dots in it. So it was just gray dots fading out to white. And then everything below that was gray and black dots interlocking. So this gives you interlocking halftone patterns that you can then totally control in real time. Like, let's say I put a curves adjustment on there, okay? And even black, gray, and white, and there's other ways to get into this. I gotta maybe save it for future videos, but I wanna show you guys, this is how you get started to do the halftone tessellator in real time. And it's just unbelievable the power you have now working with your artwork into halftone patterns and and just the control you have and i can change this to the other pattern like the elliptical or the lines and there's so much you can do with it so 
I'm going to stop this video here. We'll continue it in another further part in the series of the free halftone patterns, what you can do with it. Um, I could go ahead and then recolorize that as well. Um, but, you know, let's just show one step at a time the free halftone patterns. This one is like the, uh, uh, the tessellator with the round dots, the lines, and the elliptical. And then there's a whole bunch of other things you can do with it, not just black and white, black, gray, and white, but other levels. And I'll show that in future videos. So I want you guys to get started where you could download it for free and just start playing around before I load the ones um, with the paid products and the other videos. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. And uh, subscribe if you want to get more updates and notifications of future videos. Hit like if you liked and enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.